This podcast is part of the Batman Universe Podcast Network, hosted by the BatmanUniverse.net. Check out everything related to Batman and the entire Bat family at the BatmanUniverse.net, including news and original content related to comics, movies, television, merchandise, video games, and more. Also, check out some of the other unique podcasts that TBU has to offer. Consider supporting this podcast by becoming a patron on Patreon. Even $1 can go a long way in supporting this content that you enjoy. Look for a link over at thebatmanuniverse.net to offer your support now. And now, on with the show. Hello and welcome to the Batman Universe Comics Podcast, Season 14, Episode 24. This is our last episode of 2022. Woo! Uh, I'm your host, Ian, and I have with me... This is Dev. And this is Theo. And we are going to wrap up the year with our one review of Detective Comics 1020, uh, 1067. And um, then Greater Gotham. And then we're out for the year. Um, we were talking about 1027 before we got on air. So that's why that number was in Ian's head. <laughs> Sorry. Correct. <laughs> also, I'm a fail. Um <laughs> There is no news. Uh, my personal speculation is that we're not really going to get much big Batman news or new Batman books until June or July when we get Batman Nighttime, the next crossover led by Ram V, uh, Chip Zdarsky, and Teeny Howard. And I'm going to hate it because Teeny Howard is my least favorite. Um, but Tell me zoom. we do. What's that? Nothing. Keep going. <laughs> So, uh, just before we get started on reviews, I wanted to take a little look back and ask my co-host and myself to name our three favorite Batman comics things of 2022. And these are off the top of our head. We haven't done an exhaustive review. This is just what's in our hearts and minds right now. Uh, should I go first? Yes. Okay, okay, okay. So, uh, to be predictable, but uh, Batman Catwoman finished up, and it was delightful. And the uh, hardback came out this month, uh, collection. And then Robin finished this year. <laughs> oh, so good. I love my baby boy. And then my third thing uh, will be White Knight. Whatever the new thing is. What are we reading right now? Beyond the White Knight. Beyond the White Knight. Yes. I got to tell y'all, I read this week's issue or whatever, this episode's issue, and I lost my mind. I was so excited and happy. And I got to like get up and run around and laugh and giggle. And I was just, I was very happy. Listeners, when she says she lost her mind, she is not lying. She <laughs> immediately texted us all and said, this is amazing. And we we're like, oh, okay. All caps. <laughs> so that's my three. Theo, what were your three? I will say Shadows. The Knight and Robin. All good. And we're going to assume this is Robin by uh, Josh Williamson, not Robin by Megan Fitzmartin. <laughs> just to clarify. Uh, yeah, most I, definitely. I don't think Theo considers the other Theo, uh, the other, <laughs> the other Robin to be a legitimate book. <laughs> It, it, it does not exist in my world. It is a book. DC is publishing it. It does not exist in my world. You've done it before. If you can do it, so can I. I reject your reality and substitute my own. This is true. I, I do like to headcanon things out of existence. Mine, first is going to be a cheat. Uh, the Flash Dark Crisis tie-in uh, by Jeremy Adams and Amon K. Noelpen, who also did four issues of uh, Shadows of the Bat. So great art, but there was a bunch of Batman family crossovers. Very cool. Good writing. Very in character of Damien, Steph, and Cass. Uh, One Bad Day Two-Face by Maroku Tamaki and Javier Fernandez. I consider this the conclusion to um, Tamaki's Detective Comics run, and I really like Fernandez's art. Um, and Batman of the Night by Zdarsky and Carmine D. Giandomenico. Woo! Carmine di Gian Domenico. Just a fantastic miniseries, something I've wanted for a long time, and they executed it just perfectly, in my opinion. So yeah, 
I think this this is a year that had a lot of really good stuff. It um, was. You know, I can only think, and it was really unfortunate, but like our Thanksgiving episode, I think, was just the biggest disappointment because we had been so spoiled on at least having a couple of amazing stories every week. And that week just happened to be just a total bummer (laughs) because i think we really got spoiled with how good the year was so that's something to be thankful for could you imagine if that issue of i am batman was included in that thing oh my goodness (laughs) we would have like a three-hour rant (laughs) it would have been a lot of bleeping did we have to did you have to bleep us i thought i feel like there was one or two bleeps there were definitely several bleeps in on the i am batman commentary <laughs> yeah that's what i meant the i am batman because we were very oh, we, were, we were bleeping i can't remember if we bleeped the thanksgiving i don't episode. remember i don't think we did i think we we're just so tired i don't think we got <laughs> that angry well we were um, angry i think i think the build up ending with that probably we, we probably would have had to do 30 minutes so <laughs> You know what we were thankful for before we were able to end that episode. We might have been PG that episode instead of family friendly. Family friendly. I don't know what podcast ratings are anyway. Um, yeah, I Apple tend to think of them that pretty much everybody follows, and I can't remember what it is. Yeah, I know. There's like explicit because I think it's like the music standard, but I think of it still as you know PG, PG thirteen, G, R, NC seventeen. <laughs> Although I don't know how you can go NC-17 on, on a podcast. podcast. <laughs> Someone have to be very inventive, which we are not in that direction. So, All right. So we're going to get started with our review of Detective Comics number 1067. <music> Written by Ram V. Uh, art by Ivan Heiss. Batman and the werewolf Gale struggle free of Mr. Freeze's ice. Bruce reflects that he feels spiritually frozen in a changing city. Mr. Freeze drags the freed Batman through the sewers. Meanwhile, Prince Arzen Orgum speaks in front of the rules of Arkham Asylum, newly purchased by his family. In his limo afterward, he meets with Gale, who presents him with the reality engine from last month's annual issue, and insists that the Orgum agents go masked in the next phase of their plan. Mr. Freeze wakes Batman after six hours, and Bruce is surrounded by ice sculptures of Nora, who has abandoned Victor in Peter Tomasi's run of Detective Comics. Freeze gives Batman one of the Asmardians that the werewolf tried to possess him with, frozen in a jar, and asks him if Gotham still needs Batman. Arzen and Orgum calls on Bruce Wayne in his brownstone, trying to make a friend, as Shavad, Gale, and Nying begin their next moves, starting with a huge explosion and a vicious gang fight. Shavad buys the Narrows housing projects from Wayne Development, hypnotizing the board with her horrifying eye-covered mask to get her way and implanting a suicide order in the board members. Jim Gordon texts Batman the news of the conflagration, and he has to cut his meeting with Arzen Orgum short, as Batman's duty calls. So, first question, how do you feel... Mr. Freeze was handled by Ram V in this issue. So good. I was actually ready to be very angry. <laughs> but he took the character development. He he made didn't change his Freeze's personality. He's still angry, upset loner. But they took all he helped Batman. He said, I'll do you a deal. Just leave me the crap alone. I'm not hurting anybody. He's still pining after Nora, even though she's rejected him. Like I really appreciated that he is making right choices. Oh, yeah, and he rejected what's the what's the organs. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Organs. So I appreciate that he's making good choices, not healthy choices, but he's making good choices, and he's helping Batman, and that was pretty cool. I really liked that. So what I appreciate, kind of along with Steph is saying, but. I guess from a creative standpoint is I appreciate the fact that Ron V picked up from what Tomasi did in his redeeming story with Freeze. Um, You know, because as disappointing as Tomasi's run was, one of the things I think we all kind of enjoyed was 
the arcs in which some of Batman's rogues seem to get redeeming stories. We see it with Two Face, and we saw it also with um, with Victor, and we now see Ron B following up on it, much as Ron B is doing so also in um, in how he's handling Two Face and. I guess we'll talk a little bit more about that in the backup. So I, I do appreciate how he he took what Tomasi did in his run and kind of followed up on it because we see how he still he still loves Nora, uh, but he's he's willing to let that go and just wants to be left alone and. Um, I appreciate that because I think one of the one of the biggest complaints we had about Tomasi's run was that we didn't get follow up on demon stories with Harvey and with Victor, and we kind of we kind of getting them both right now. Yeah, I concur on both things. I think that Mister Freeze has that sort of very melancholy, tragic air that kind of really suits him, especially since uh, Ram V is really drawing that connection between Freeze and Batman. Both of them are frozen by their trauma. He's drawing that out. And also, the way he built on what Tomasi did, everything that that Theo said, it's just, that's how I think you should do continuity. You don't need to have read Tomasi's run, but if you have read Tomasi's run, it really gives that character a sense that this isn't a brand new character. It's not like the one bad day Mr. Freeze was just like, there's a completely different origin, completely different everything. This is the freeze we've been reading about. Those issues we've read in the past mattered, but they're not essential. So it's not like soaking you. You have to read it, but it is rewarding you if you have. And it, it works in the story, too. So it's not just like, ooh, I like that continuity reference. Like, freeze actually advances the plot by giving Batman the arson, the demon in the jar. But he also you know, provides that thematic progression of Batman being like, well... Do I need to change? Can I change? Is it possible for me to change? Or will I stay like Mr. Freeze underneath making frozen images of my parents? You know, Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, in a lot of ways, you know, Batman always is going to be frozen because he's always going to be Batman. But most writers have tried. Well, most writers who stay on the book for more than a year have tried to do something with him, um, giving him some new character, new character trait, progressive relationship, etc. So I'm very curious to see what Ram V does with this. How do you feel like the, the overall story is progressing now that we have sort of a bigger idea of where the organs are coming from, from the annual? It still feels super slow. Like as far as things happening, uh, Batman got on Frozen. The engine thing was delivered. Uh, Bruce made a new friend. I don't know. It just didn't seem like, Again, that much is happening. This is definitely more of a, I don't even want to say emotional, an atmospheric book. And it's just really drawing out the motivations. And I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. I'm just talking out of my butt. It's just adventure story-wise, not much is happening. But I guess we're getting a better insight into what everyone's doing and thinking. And I was right. And Batman has a... heater in his bat suit <laughs> i don't know <laughs> yeah the, 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 again kind of piggyback on what steph is saying we're we're getting more it's just taking so long to get it and i'm i'm i still don't know how i feel about that i i, I think the pace needs to pick up a little bit more than what than what it's doing right now it, again, it's good that we're getting more and we're seeing more and we have a little bit better understanding, but I really would have hoped we would have been further along than where we are now. I don't know. For this, maybe it's because I do feel like I got a huge leap forward in understanding the shape of the story, um, whereas the previous arc and a half, I was really just floundering. I just could not wrap my head around what was going on. But now I feel like my head is wrapped around it, and I don't know where it's going, but I have an idea of, like, the shape. 
It doesn't feel formless in my head anymore. I don't feel lost when reading it, so I don't mind the pacing. And honestly, I feel like a bunch does happen. I mean, Batman gets unfrozen, and he meets Mr. Freeze. He gets a clue. Uh, he beats, uh, what's his name? Arzen. And he, the, the Narrows explodes into violence. Like, that's a fair amount to happen in a single issue. Yeah. I think that, part of it is the cast is so big that everyone's kind of doing one thing per issue. It's not like Batman is necessarily doing everything, but a lot of stuff is happening. But it's like each plot is progressed sort of minimally rather than one plot going way forward, if that makes sense. How do you feel about Ivan Reese's artwork here? I think there was a lot of interesting moments and storytelling choices in this issue. Yeah, I think I liked it. Either I'm getting used to him or it was extra good. <laughs> no, I really liked it. I thought I thought it was creepy where it needed to be creepy and it was detailed um in a lot of places and told a good story. The coloring is definitely adding to the atmosphere. A lot of reds and blues. Yeah, Dave Stewart is the colorist on this run, and he is a huge veteran. Like, he goes back decades, and he's so good. Yeah, it definitely adds to the ambiance and the atmosphere that the writing is doing. Sorry, my cats keep opening the doors, so I'm getting very distracted. It's uh, Steph's turn to be distracted by cats this time, not Theo's. (laughs) Yeah, I definitely enjoyed Reese's art. And, you know, again, I was a fan of his when he was doing uh, Shadows. Uh, so, yeah, I have no complaints. Enjoyed it. Yeah, I thought that the um, the the opening sequence with uh, where Batman sees all the ice sculptures of Nora, I thought that was really haunting. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of like a lot of emotional stuff that I think Reese really got across in this issue, and I I'm really glad that he's still on the book. Still kind of bummed that Tamaki left, but. I'm glad that we kept uh, Reese on art uh, so he could get a real run. Because he only did four... Oh, no, I guess he did seven issues. Because he did that three-issue arc that none of us really count. <laughs> um, but I think that this this is cool. I, I really appreciate the the power. He's, he's a powerful artist. He doesn't necessarily make the most um, beautifully appealing figures. Um, he's not like... Uh, Jorge Jimenez, who you know, or or Dan Mora, who really make those characters just lovable. They grab your heart emotionally. These characters are a little more standard, a little less conventionally beautiful, but the storytelling and the power of the line, I think, is something that Reese really excels at. And it's really brought out by um, Dave Stewart. Dave Stewart, he did... uh, The big thing I always remember Dave Stewart is uh, Batwoman Elegy which was a Detective Comics run by Greg Rucka and J.H. Williams III. And J.H. Williams III worked with Stewart to really create a painterly look. And you can see the skills developed there. Just, he applies them so well to all the work he does. Yeah, so that wraps up our main story. Any final questions before we move to the backup? Why is Argum befriending Bruce? What's his motivation there? Well, that that really, I, I raised this question in my review. I think that really depends on whether you think the Orgums know that Bruce is Batman or not. Yeah. I don't think so, but they could. They seem to be super, super aware of a lot of stuff. So if he is aware that Bruce is Batman, obviously it's a ploy to get either Batman to quit or to kill him. If he's not, I would say it's probably... What he says in, I mean, I would take what he says at Fate Val. He he lost his father young. He feels a connection with Bruce Wayne, who lost his parents young. They're both. But they're also trying to do business, like they were buying stuff from the Waynes, right? That's those were the. Well, it's almost like a hostile takeover. Yeah. What they do. So, so that was just a little weird. I kind of think that they do know that he's Batman. Yeah. That's kind of especially you know Gale the werewolf. I mean, he yeah. would smell Bruce Wayne, wouldn't you think? Yeah. I would think so. I don't know. Maybe Batman thinks of this thing because he has faced werewolves before. Maybe he has some kind of scent disguiser, but. And why was Gale able to get out of the freeze when he doesn't have a heater and he isn't Batman? And it took. He's a werewolf who's over six hours. 700 years old. (sighs) Stupid. He's got like super. I mean. He's insulated. (laughs) I have read some books, which everyone would know about, but I'm not going to name because I'm embarrassed. (laughs) 
Well, I'm not really embarrassed. Did you read but Twilight? I will neither confirm nor defy. <gasps> In these books, the werewolves are said to have a very, very hot body temperature. I personally don't think they know just yet. And I'm I'm going primarily off, and I think that's, if I can remember this, this was in the annual where Gail is talking about how they need to eliminate Batman from the equation, and I would think if if they knew Batman and Bruce were one and the same, that that would have been revealed. Because I think there was another piece where they also mentioned having to eliminate Bruce Wayne as well. Yeah, like like I said, I don't know either way. Um, I can I, I won't be upset if I'm wrong. I think that they do know, but I won't be upset if I'm wrong because I don't think it's stated. And I think that you can explain it either way. Okay, let's move on to our backup. Uh, A Tale of Three Halves, Part 3, by Cy Spurrier and artist Hayden Sherman. Harvey and Two-Face continue their struggle with the asthma demon inside Harvey's mind slash soul. Trying to make plans without the possessing force realizing and reporting to the Orgums. Harvey confesses that Two-Face is the image of his father, and he hates him, but is grateful for the violence that has saved his life even before the attack that left him scarred. With this new insight into the two halves of his mind, Harvey can let Dr. Mead, the psychiatrist who quote-unquote fixed him this time, escape, and can hide that fact from the asthma and Gale the werewolf, his handler. So, what do we think about... The conclusion of this Two Face arc, three issue Two Face backup. I liked it. I liked it. I don't know. I feel like we saw the Harvey that had the character development before. <laughs> it was interesting that he kind of befriended Two Face and overcame the Miasmar, I guess. I don't know. I thought it was very interesting. I liked this ending. I liked I liked the position that Two Face was and Harvey were at the end. Yeah, I I've been enjoying this conflict between Harvey and Two Face, and um, you know it's 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 just not sure. I now I'm not sure I am all that crazy about the idea of Two Face always being there, but I mean it's possible. But um, yeah, I've been enjoying this. I, I'm 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 ready to see how this manifests in the main story, you know, considering Two-Face, you know, his, his main goal right now is learning Batman's identity, um, which I guess, you know, kind of says, Hey, identities are still important since Two-Face doesn't know who Batman is, but, um, I'm I'm enjoying the internal conflict, you know, and but the only thing I guess I got thrown off about was in the last issue, I thought the boy expelled the asthma from Harvey. Remember when when that all came about and he was on top of him and he did his little mm-hmm. white bird on the back thing and then um you see the the typical come from Harvey, but it seems it's still there. I don't know. Maybe that's what really did it then. Maybe that's what's allowing him to sneak things by it. Maybe it's a combination. So, so hold on a sec. I want to go back a little bit. Theo, you said that you Two Face does or does not know who Batman's identity. He doesn't. Because I thought that the point of my own worst enemy is that he does. The Scott Snyder arc at the beginning of Rebirth. Who cares? That that's not continuity. Sorry, but uh, uh, pretty sure it is though. Because <laughs> again, remember, you know, after all this is said and done, he tells he Two Face tells Harvey, "Hey, you know, I did this for you. You and I, we got to talk." He's still well, trying to learn who Batman's identity is. While, while oh, when we say Two Face. 
I mean both Two Face and Harvey. Are you just talking about the Two Face personality? Yes. Okay. No, I agree with you there. I think yeah, that. Harvey did, yeah, Harvey Dent knows who who Bruce is. He knows who Batman is. Two Face right. does not. Okay, we're in agreement then. It's okay. confusing to talk about it because we call the composite Two Face, but we yeah. also call the personality Two Face. Yeah, yeah. Ha- ha- Harvey Dent knows Bruce May- Bruce Wayne and Batman are one and the same, and we see we see that in the in the first issue of the arc. You know, right. in how they're talking. Two Face, the the demon within, I'll say that, does not know. And that's what he's trying to get out of Harvey. Right. Right. Okay. We're we're tracking now. I just <laughs> was confused. How okay, so we already kind of touched on this with the question of the sort of did the boy exercise the asthma or not? Gale seems to think the asthma is still there, but it's quote unquote silent and Two Face can't hear it anymore. So I don't know. This is very interesting. Um, I maybe it's because I know this is coming up, but we know that Ram V is going to do a big Two Face issue coming up. But this felt like it was putting Two Face in position for that. Did it feel like that to you guys, or was is that just me knowing that it's coming? I mean. It feels like they're setting Harvey up to do something, and hopefully it's something good. I mean... I mean, more it's a setup rather than a completed story. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it felt it felt like a completed journey, but not a complete story. Okay. Uh, Theo, did you want to chime in there? I'm sorry, I missed that question. D- so I know that we're having a... Uh, a single issue that Ram Fee is going to focus on Two Face, and so this felt to me like setup for that. Do you feel that? Do, would you agree that this is a setup backup story, or does it feel more like its own completed story? Well, everything everything Spurrier has done thus far has been a setup for the main for the main story. So I, I don't see this as any different. Yeah. Okay. So I think we're all sort of on the same page right now. I guess my question is, did you enjoy it? <laughs> I know you're the Spurrier hater. I am a Spurrier hater. I did not hate this. I found it... Um, it's definitely not my favorite, and it's not something that makes me want to buy the issue by itself. There are backups that I have and will buy entire issues just for the backup. Uh, And this is not that, but it's also not one that makes me want to take the staples out and cut off those pages. (laughs) I've also done this. Oh my gosh, what for? Uh, That is a question you'll have to ask me off camera. Oh my gosh, I'm so curious now. It's a teeny hour issue. It probably is. (laughs) All right, let us give Detective Comics 1067 Ratings out of five Rose and Demons in a Jar. I know this is like literally what we do. And I never think about it beforehand. And I extra didn't think about it this time. Three and a quarter. Three and a quarter. Three and a quarter. (laughs) I kill kill me. I really do. (laughs) I kill Ian too, but that's the point. I I don't think influence the void gets away from the boat is fair. (coughs) I couldn't. No, I. I, There was no way I could give it three and a half. I just. I. I was. I was. uh, uh, No. I am going to give it a three seven five because I actually enjoyed both stories. Because again, I'm 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 liking this internal battle between Harvey and Two Face. Sorry, what was your number? Three seven five. Okay, so my vi- my rating on the site is a three five because I think it is above average, enjoyable, really good art in both parts. Writing is working together, um, and I'm just feeling better about the series. Uh, this gives us an average of three point five. Um, no mode, but we do have a medium of 3.5. So take that. God. I want to change my vote. <laughs> Too late. 
Whether you are a first-time TBU Comics podcast listener, a 13-year veteran, or anything in between, we'd love to hear what you think about this episode or any of the comics we discussed. Send emails to tbu at thebatmanuniverse.net. Join our Discord server linked at thebatmanuniverse.net. Send us a tweet at tbu underscore comics. Or, if you're a patron, leave us a comment on our Patreon page. We'd also love it if you left us a review on iTunes. We'd love to read your comments on the next episode of the Batman Universe Comics Podcast. Batman may claim he works alone, but we know that he needs the Bat Family. Join the TVU Bat Family and let us know what you think. Let's move to Greater Gotham. Nightwing number 99. Thumbs up, but like, I don't know. What's up? Most of the times I finish reading Nightwing and go, oh my gosh, this was so great. This, this, that, and this one, I was just like, yeah, that's fine. It, it was a neutral for me. I'm not crazy about the Tony Zuko stuff. Meh. It's a thumbs down for me. I don't, I feel like the solicits promised me something, and what I got was. Warmed over macaroni, and it I just like keeps warm macaroni. But, but it isn't like, my favorite. If I was promised a steak like dinner, macaroni, then, yeah. where it's been in the fridge and you warm it up, and then you put it back in the fridge and you warm it up again. <laughs> Double warm up. Ew. That's kind of where I am on this. I'm like, I wanted like a full pasta lasagna, fresh out of the oven, and I'm getting the double warmed up macaroni. However, if the, if 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 macaroni is made. Right, you can warm it up as many times as you want, and it's gonna be the bomb dot com. So <laughs> y'all need to check out cooking techniques. I add bacon and really I can cheese. make good macaroni. I'm not saying I'm just saying that if you make it from the box and then you warm it yeah. twice. Make it from the box. Oh my god. <laughs> we just disturbed them. Yeah, that's that no, so I, I don't you know, make macaroni from the box, just to be yeah. clear. Yeah, you don't. You're not disturbing me because you're talking to the guy whose Christmas dinner and Thanksgiving dinner was from honey baked ham. So I didn't cook a thing. So, I mean, honey baked ham is good. All right, <laughs> and I continue to be the traitor. Dark Crisis number seven. Uh, oh, I didn't read it. <laughs> you read this book again? It had stuff in it. <laughs> Abstain. All right, this is a thumbs up. This is a dumb event. I think all events are dumb, but the art was gorgeous. It got me emotional several times. And as I said, Stephanie Brown was in it. Stephanie Brown showing up in a crisis event in a good way, not dying, is awesome. And see, I don't know if I should feel... If I should feel pissed off that I'm reading it, or if I should feel... I don't want to say disappointed that I'm not reading it, because it's clear that they're going to make the universe based off of this. And it's truly, truly going to ruin my enjoyment of, of some of the stuff that I'm reading now, simply because I don't know what the hell dark, going on in Dark Crisis. And it's going to spill into the main books, and I'm just going to be lost. And I still have zero intention. On. I really don't think it's going to make you that lost. I don't know. I mean, I'm reading Flash, and I feel like that's the book most connected to Dark Crisis, and I don't think you really need to read it to understand it. We shall uh, see. We, I mean, that's all we can do. Wait and see. Uh, Batman Superman, World's Finest, number 10. Thumbs up, I guess. It was fine. <laughs> I guess? <laughs> I mean, it was a one bad day story for the new little baby hero. I think it fast forward fast forwarded to the present, maybe. I don't know. I'm confused. I thought this was Batman Superman. Who's this new hero? So they there's this parallel universe guy who showed up here. His parents sent him to us to or to Batman Superman because he kind of had his own planet blow up. Because, you know, that's never happened before. Um, never, and then Superman, he kind of has these Superman-ish powers. So Superman takes him under his wing and is trying to teach him. But then the key and Joker kidnap him and torture him. And 
Did you just say the key? Yeah. I think that was the Like best. Don Summers from Buffy the Vampire no, Slayer? Oh, this guy's got like portal powers. Oh, America Chavez powers. And anyway, it was fine. Make it from the main. Wait, a- and they didn't use sideways? I guess this is the past, so sideways doesn't exist yet. But. So, yeah. It was fine. It was a Joker one one bad day story, so, I mean, it was never going to be a happy story, but it was fine. So, any ties yet to nope. Batman? Nope. The only tie, the only tie was was the first story where where they lock up the dude who who takes over Damien. So, like, the only real knowledge you need is that Batman is intimately knowledgeable about the dude that is infecting Damien. That's all. That's all. I am still not reading this. Not at all. I like it. That's good. Demo is too good. So, so, so when you said you like it, is it like, I actually like this, or is it a, is it more of a, Future State Gotham. This is so stupid. It's no, funny. no, no. It's not like that at all. It's I'm I'm enjoying it. I wouldn't. Well, no. Yeah, I I said I put it. I would put it in the top books that I read first because I want to know what happens next. It's just that this kid has been taking up a lot of real estate lately, and then they added Joker, so I just wasn't thrilled. You're a better person, You're a better person than I. <laughs> Batman versus Robin number four. Uh, what did I say? Hold on, I gotta be honest. I gotta see what I said. I kind of thought that sound I, in the back was was actually your rating. <laughs> Thumbs up, but like begrudgingly. Obviously, we do have a neutral rating, staff. No, no, I know, but enough stuff happened that was good. Alfred, evil Alfred was whatever he was. And so there was a little bit of real Alfred there that was able to talk to Bruce. Bruce knew all along that he was a baddie. Damien is finally unpossessed. And the first thing he does is, Father, I'm sorry. You know, oh, I don't want to be doing this. So it's obvious. You know, and then Talia is fighting with them, which is good. And anyway, it's, it's enough good stuff happened, but like we didn't need the journey to get to the good stuff. There was no there was no reason to have the bad stuff in the first place. You didn't have to cancel Robin. That's what I'm saying. Uh, but we needed to cancel Robin so we could have the wonderful Tim Drake Robin. <laughs> oh God, no, we did. Shh, don't don't go there. I mean, that's really why they did it. Balls. I am. I am going. Neutral. So, first of all, Batman with pointy ear Dr. Fate helmet is the <laughs> dumbest thing I've ever seen. Don't know. Just no. I like the idea of, you know, Talia trying to kill her grandmother. That's just, that's just awesomeness. Isn't it her mother in law? No, that's a grandmother. No, it's her mother in law. No. Oh, you're right. 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 I, I yeah. somehow in my brain she was married to Roz, and I was like, that doesn't work. No, oh okay. my gosh. No, no, I know. I, I know. mean, Roz that's is it. creepy and gross, and I think he might think about that. But you know, that's <laughs> illegal in, in in every state in this country, most countries on this planet, and might be acceptable in some ancient <laughs> cultures, but even most of those, it wasn't cool. Yeah. <laughs> Um, um, so there, there was, there was, there was some good stuff that allowed it to not be a thumbs down. Like I do, I, I do like the fact that Robin, the real Robin is trying to redeem himself. He, he, he still is heavy influenced by his dad, despite the fact that, you know, he lived with his mom all his life. And, you know, used to seeing people die with no repercussions. He he still is under his dad's influence and in not letting his great, well, not his great, no, yeah, not letting his great grandmama meet her maker. Yeah. So, neutral. Thumbs down. <laughs> I hate this whole series. It's a bunch of rug pulls, and I don't enjoy that. The art is inconsistent. And oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. 
Damien went from looking like 25 in some scenes and like <laughs> 12 in others. I was like, I don't, huh, whatever. The, the, and, and I guess the thing that that makes me hate it is this idea that this one thing in Batman and the Batman universe is just going to take over the entire DC universe with this whole Lazarus planet event that's about to pop up. That I am not looking forward to. Now woman number 50. I have to give it a neutral. Just because there was bat cat scenes in it. But they were not quality bat cat scenes. And it was a very upsetting issue. Other than, oh, well, and Vermont is finally dead. So that's good. I don't think he's really dead. This no, is, no, he's fine. He's dead. He's I think they're faking his death. Totally dead. He's dead. I would like him to be dead. I just think that this run is so bad it's never going to give me what I want. Uh, this is also a neutral for me. Wait, because... wait, wait. Because I actually, again, got got influenced by social media who was oh? Doing, oh? doing their typical being and moaning and <laughs> I read the uh, at least the final pages. <laughs> Uh, oh, the Juan Ferreira stuff? Huh? The Juan Ferreira art stuff where Bat and Cat are in jail? Yeah, that, and the fact, that, the fact that Selena is just railing on Bruce because Valmont is dead and all she could think about is the two of them... What do you call it again, Ian? Oh, what did I call it? Do it doing oh, the ugly. dirty or something? No, bumping, uh, bumping uglies. Oh, oh, no, I did not say that. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. I don't think so. Yes, yes you, you did. did. I expect <laughs> I expect an audio clip of me saying <laughs> that here. Because I don't I don't remember saying that at all. Yeah, I've got twenty four oh, hours to edit this. I'm not looking for clips. <laughs> oh, oh listener. Please. It was it was only it was time only, stamps for us. It was only a few episodes ago. Whatever if whatever episode that was when you Ran it about uh, Selena doing rooftops with. Oh yeah, with Belmont. Yeah. Yeah. Matter of fact, it was the same episode. <laughs> that he he was doing the bump and ugly, but just I I hate what Catwoman looks like from Teeny Howard. I, is that different from uh, the Joelle Jones and run? <laughs> it this is worse. I, I I hated the idea of uh, Villa Hermosa, but I was okay with uh, Dead Cop Boy, you know, because well, yeah, because he was it, actually it, an interesting it, character. Yeah, and 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 the, and the and the other thing I appreciated is Joel respected the history and the relationship enough to where even though. Those two skirted the line with the flirtations, blah, 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 blah. They never crossed it, even to the point to where when um, he and Bruce were on the rooftop, he acknowledged that, well, not Bruce, but he and Batman were on the rooftop, he acknowledged the relationship between the two. Tini Howard, however, is just, She's screwing with everyone, and did, did didn't y'all say she also like had a threesome or something like that? No, not that I'm aware. Oh, with that, oh, oh, that punchline. That's punchline. No, punch oh yeah. Line. Well, those punch are the villains, was, though. Yeah, there was the okay. uh, the King and Queen of Hearts, and I mean, of uh, what is it? What is it? What Royal it? Flush. The King and Queen of the Royal Flush and Punchline had a threesome. Bottom bottom line, I I just hate what Tini Howard's doing to Selena, and just just ruining the character. I hate what she's doing too. I wouldn't say she's ruining it because Selena's been in really bad spots before. But I just don't enjoy reading this. I have to put this at a neutral. I have to bump it up a little bit because compared to previous issues, this is an improvement. There's a lot of emotional moments that partly work as opposed to not working at all. And you're just happy Velmont is dead. Yeah, I don't even think he's dead. I want him to be, but I don't think he is. The way they integrated the punchline crossover makes no sense. It comes out of nowhere. This new character, Tom Cat, 
I oh. understand where it's coming from, but Ugh. it's so stereotypical. It's so badly designed, and the dialogue is so cringy. It's just bad. It's just a bad comic, and I'm tired of it, and I know it's just going to keep going. So, yeah, it's it's a neutral, but it's going to, unless something else improves a lot, I'm going right back to thumbs down on this run. It's just bad. All right, Bat- speaking of bad things, <laughs> Batman Urban Legends number 22. I think. Oh no, I didn't write that one down. Oh no, I didn't write that one down. Um, I think I think I thought that was okay. Neutral. I missed Urban the last. I mi- I, f- I missed the last one, so I didn't catch that the Academy thing was a part two with the little kitten and the Thomas Martha Wayne story. I didn't realize that's what I was reading until halfway through. Um. But, um, yeah, I think I didn't, nothing there made me just roll my eyes and what made me want to skip whole issues. I read, I read every story. So neutral. <laughs> I got through every story without throwing my computer across the wall. So neutral. Okay. Mark this down. But for me, this is a thumbs up. Ooh. Why? Ooh. <laughs> you betrayed me. <laughs> Now I will I will admit that croc story I probably could have given it a neutral and probably would have d- drawn my tablet across the room if it was the only story of the issue that was horrid I en- I enjoyed the seer I enjoyed the Jamal Campbell story although I'm not a fan of seer I enjoyed the I enjoyed the story with Thomas and Martha. I think, and mainly because I guess I'm enjoying how Damien's being written. <laughs> yeah, <he's>, like, <laughs> he seems like old school Damien. Uh, and we also had we also had uh, Titus and Alfred cameos. So I always upvote for that. Yeah, that that Croc story probably was the worst for me, but I actually enjoy this issue. So, thumbs up. I feel so betrayed. This is a <laughs> thumbs down for me. It continues to just be mediocre at best with uh, admittedly good art from Jamal Campbell, but the inclusion of Seer really wrecked that story for me, and I just... I, I hate this book. One more issue. One more issue. Deceased, War of the Undead Gods, number oh, five. This book was blah, neutral. It was it was lantern heavy, and lanterns aren't my favorite. Oh, and Mixo Pickle is evil. <gasps> well, yeah, I read this one. I forgot I read this one. Mixo Pickle Ixilix got got zombified. Got zombified. <gasps> They're all gonna die now. He was their biggest hitter. Oh, and Good. and Superman is dead again. <laughs> Wait, did he die? Again? He got like vaporized. Him? He got vaporized. Did he? Yeah. Because it, it, it was a neutral for me too. I, again, not a lot of Batman stuff. No, nope. you know, with, with Damien, very heavy on the land and stuff, and then just the just the notion of how they got. Our favorite fifth dimension imp to turn was just <laughs> so neutral. This is, and I think this is the second issue where I gave it a neutral. Well, I think it'll be no surprise to anyone who listened to our defunct podcast, Deceased Cast. Uh, this is thumbs down. I don't like the story. Uh, I don't like the art. And I don't like what's happening. So, yeah. But I actually read it because someone was like, it's so crazy. So I had to find out why it was so crazy. But I regret Uh, GCPD, the blue wall, number three. Oh, I think thumbs up. But again, it's not your sit down for fun story. This is (laughs) Renee. (laughs) Renee is such a bummer. (laughs) (laughs) And everyone's just super sad and racism sucks. And y'all just be nice to each other. (laughs) It is. A neutral t- trending up for me. I, I, I wasn't crazy about how he is making Renee this obsessive. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Out forgot. of control. Yeah, I forgot that. Cop who is letting 
this thing with Two Face just simply wreck her. Because the issue was mostly about her and her obsession. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it was just, it, it just if if they were a if they were an ex couple, it would seem stalkerish. I mean, it was just everything was two face this, two face that, two face this, two face that, and I just. Uh, My problem is that she's so dumb about it. She's like, everyone's like, we don't have cause for this. If we get caught, you're in serious trouble. She's like, I don't have a feeling in my gut. I'm like, okay, you can have a feeling in your gut, but you don't have to be dumb about it. And that's exactly how she's being portrayed. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, she has literally, she has literally no one who is siding with her. Even the one tech, I can't remember if it was a technician or a cop, but who the the the, the, the blonde headed guy. Yeah, I think, I, think that, I know who you're talking about. That she got to go and bug him without a warrant and even after that he he says hey commish there's there's nothing there and so she's like screw it you don't know what you're talking about either it's gonna happen it's gonna happen it's gonna happen and even after harvey tells her i know at some point i'm gonna do something and when it happens you have every right to come after me but right now, I'm not the person that's doing all this. Please leave me alone. And she just and she just stands there and I, uh, John Ridley, I'm so disappointed. I just I I hated I hated how he portrayed Renee in this issue. I mean, the thing is, there are times in her career that Renee would be like this. But this is supposed to be veteran Renee, and that just doesn't sit right. I also have zero clues whatsoever when this is supposed to be happening. I don't know if One Bad Day Two-Face is in continuity or not, because they seem to be treating it like it's not, because if it were, he'd be in jail again right now. But in this, he's like on probation, and he's definitely not doing the stuff that he's doing in Ram V's Detective Comics run. So I don't know what's going on with this issue or this continuity, as a story by itself, I'd say it's a neutral. But it's a neutral trending down because I'm still really frustrated. It's better than the last couple issues for me because I did get invested, because I do love Renee. Um, but yeah, I can't go higher than a neutral for this. DC versus Vampires number 12. The final issue. Hopefully we can stop talking about this. I hope they don't do a DC versus Vampires 2. I skipped it. Same here. Uh, is the, mm, I'd say it's a thumbs down. It's dumb. <laughs> um, I know what Tynan was trying to do, but I think because Tynan didn't actually write it, it ends up being just kind of dumb. And it's exactly what I predicted. Uh, spoilers. The good guys lose. It's an apocalypse story and they don't win. So thumbs down. The art is pretty by Otto Schmidt, but no. Harley Quinn number 25 thumbs up and the book has completely changed tra trajectory theo if you i mean i know you hate harley but the book is completely different than it used to be and old lady harley was in this issue and i like her thumbs and up. in a few issues it's gonna be different all over again thanks to uh Amy howard <laughs> yeah but thumb thumbs up i i liked it, it was like into the Harley verse, I guess. <laughs> I don't think I read this. It's, <laughs> it ends with a room I full did. of Harleys because she breaks the U parallel universe travel machine and it like brings all the Harleys to one place. Yeah, I think I have to abstain. I don't remember reading that. <laughs> that, that almost seems like the the uh, Marvel miniseries, uh, the variants. That's. There are so many. There's Spider-Gram through the Spider-Gwenverse. There's the variants. There's the Miles Morales one. There's It's like everybody's freaking doing multiverse everything. I was complaining on the server that I was tired of it. Um, Riddler Year One, number two. Again, this is a tie-in to the Batman movie with yeah, Paul yeah. Dono. As a standalone story about a nameless Batman villain... 
<laughs> it was fine. It was fine. Thumbs up. You mean the Hushler? <laughs> yes, the Hushler. I need to give him a new mind. I don't like the Hushler, <laughs> but I need to come up. Um, obviously, as as Riddler, it sucks beans. But if you can d- suspend disbelief or whatever the phrase is, it's fine. Thumbs up. No, I'm not reading that. But if you can't uh, do that, it's a thumbs down. <laughs> if I and if I if I was reading it, there'd be a thumbs down. I I I hated the Riddler in the movie, so I'm pretty sure I would hate it in the comics. After the first issue, just felt way too much like Batman Forever. I was out. So, Tim Drake, Robin, number four, <laughs> neutral. We're finally getting to what we were promised, which is Bernard is kidnapped because he's a plot device. <laughs> Uh, so thumbs down. Just kidding. Thumbs down. Blah. I was going to say you, 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 you need to go through some re-education on uh, the hatred for <laughs> what Chris Martin is doing. I don't this. hate anything. I just don't like being strongly forced to dis- sit down and read this. <laughs> strongly, you don't dis- have to. I will be reading no. it, so you can skip it. I'm waiting for the day that Riley Rossmo doesn't do the art or character design. I think that's the next issue. I'm Is waiting for really? the day. I really think it's Roger Cruz's next issue. What are you waiting I for? Re- I'm waiting for the day all this you just gets retcon. <laughs> uh, are you abstaining, Theo? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I think you, so. I just want to make sure. You read so- you read Catwoman. Okay, again. Uh, that was only after hearing the whole Valmont tried to kill Bruce, Selena killed Valmont instead. Then Selena bl- blames Bruce for her killing Valmont. Yeah, so. That was ass. I don't know why that made you want to read it. <laughs> I wanted to see how stupid it was. Real stupid. I, I refuse to read Tim Drake Robin. I refuse to. That there, there is. There is nothing. I DC would have to drop some serious dough my way in order for me to pick up this book. And what if Damien guest starred? What? What if Damien guest starred? Nope. Damien guest stars and a whole bunch of stuff. So I'll just pick up those. That's true. That's true. Um, so this is a neutral for me. I have to go up for my normal thumbs down. Uh, art again. I don't hate Riley Rossmo. I think he's the wrong choice for this book, but because he was drawing Stefan Cass, I actually enjoyed a lot of it. I thought that the way Fitzmartin wrote Steph Cass and Tim working together was really good. They actually worked together unlike the awful Tim Drake Pride special. So yeah, it, it bumped it up to a neutral. Still really not enjoying this book, but trying to be honest, it was a significant step up from the last three issues. Punchline, the Gotham game number three. Neutral. This was a not a crossover, but a continue. I guess it makes it a crossover, a continuation from the Catwoman story. Sort of what happened? Oh, Colin, C- Collins, Colin, Cat, Colin, the Colin. of Col- Colin's in trouble again. Of course, of course, because <laughs> he's kid. a plot device. <laughs> that kid has been nothing but trouble since the Joker storyline started. Uh, uh, I been nothing but trouble since Rebirth. Trouble, trouble, trouble. Uh, I don't remember him in Rebirth. Can we go as far as going back to uh, Eternal? I liked him in Batman and Robin Eternal. Oh, whatever. No. <laughs> but I like Harper Row, so. Oh, God, dude. <laughs> I don't I don't hate hate the punchline book, but it's not. It's... it's you know how I said there's books I read at the beginning? This is, this is one of the last, this is one of the last ones I read. <laughs> and at least there wasn't a threesome this time. There was never a threesome. They were Why look, is that a positive? They were looking for people to have a threesome with, and she responded just to get in the door to, to recruit them to fight for her. So there was no threesome. It went off panel. I mean, it's a PG-13 comic. They're not going to show a real threesome. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so, I mean, the fact, that, the fact that it's a PG-13 comic and they're actually mentioning that should be quite disturbing. They've shown Talia after an orgy. And, 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 what's his butt? Ghostmaker. Oh, true. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, PG-13 <laughs> means a lot more than it used to. <laughs> All right. So, Theo, I'm assuming that you did not read this. <laughs> you really? Okay. Just checking. Of course. Uh, I actually forgot to read this. I meant to, but I did not get to it. So I will catch up next time. And we're going to end with Batman Beyond the White Knight number seven by Sean Murphy. It is deaf. Uh, thumbs up, two thumbs up. Dick is okay. I was so happy. <laughs> Dick is okay. He's together with Barbara again. They're happy family. And and they say they have a son. They have a son and they saved Terry from being evil because because he was being suit controlled. And and then. Terry suit has a holograph projector, so now everyone sees Jack and isn't as surprised as they probably should be. <laughs> and Jason is back with what? What's her name? Mao Bao Mo Ro. Dude, I just read this and I don't remember her name. Shoot, but I really like her. <laughs> yeah, she's pretty cool. Yeah, I can't remember the name either. So I'll, I have that effect on people. <laughs> I make them to forget. Our kids, not to our hearts. Okay. Um, yeah, thumbs up for me too. I, I've I've been enjoying the series. I I still think this is going to be. I still think at some point, Joker is going to be in Batman's head, and and that's going to be a real battle. How many more issues I mean, are I, there? This is the second to last issue. I don't, know, I don't think that's happening this series. I think that may happen in a future series. Because if you remember, when when he appears in in Terry's from Terry's projector, which is funny to say the least, <laughs> he is he is more Joker now than he's ever been. Yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. You know, so I just I I just foresee something happening. Even if it leads, because I don't think this is the end of the White Knight universe. I hope not. No, he's yeah. got plans. Yeah, so it it, it it could possibly lead into the next volume. Probably. I mean, I mean but, but... That's what people are telling me. But Joker popping up, I mean, Jack popping up looking like Joker instead of Jack means something to me. I'm going to give this a thumbs up, even though, as a whole, the White Knight universe frustrates me. I thought this was quite effective. Um, I did like the final reunion of Dick and Barbara and their son. Um, I just think that Sean Murphy's not a great writer, structurally or dialogue-wise. He has a lot of good ideas, but I really wish he'd work with a co-writer. Uh, his art is phenomenal. And this was a well-constructed issue, more or less. So, thumbs up for me. That brings us to the end of Greater Gotham. Uh, We shall move on to our Patreon appreciation. Thank you all to the following people for supporting us on Patreon at a significant level. Thank you to Lisa Slack, Donovan Morgan Grant, Austin Davis, Ian Miller, Stanton's Grave, Johnny McCloskey, Gerald Green, Donald Townsend, Cesar Diaz, Joshua Lappin-Bertoni, Ed Grouse, Jessica Morales, Rob O, Captain America, David Richards, Tim Gareth, Mary Garrett, Robert Lewis, and Stephanie Mounts. Thank you all for helping us to keep the archives up, keep our new episodes coming, and listening. We really appreciate you guys uh, hearing what we have to say. Hopefully we'll hear what, from what you have to say, maybe some of your favorites from this 2022 year. Um, but yeah, that brings us to the end of our episode. Thanks for listening. I've been Ian. This is Steph. And this is Theo. Happy New Year. Everybody. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy Bat New Year. <laughs> and we'll see you next time. Bye.